So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome to another video in which we'll be taking a look at use effect hook, what it is and how it works. So in the last video we saw how use ref works, but well, we are kind of making a use of a hack of set timeout so that we can actually, you know, let this component render and then we call the console log stuff. So anyway, what we need to do is bring in first of all another hook called use effect and what it's going to do is think of use effect as as a monitor of your component by monitor what i mean is that this hook would be able to monitor any changes you like inside this particular component any changes in values what do i mean by that well let's start with use effect like this and i'm going to pass in a function so this function right here which you see would be called every time there's a change in the value you're monitoring. So what do I mean by that? Your component, whatever your component is, right? You have some props and stuff. React, what it does is a lot of times, if there's a change in your component, React will re-render your component, right? Now, when it re-renders your component, there would be some values which are changed, like props, state, you know any other value which is bringing uh, which is coming from props and state and there would be some values which won't be changed maybe like some sort of state variable or some sort of prop variable with use effect you can monitor over these props and states and decide when you want to run this function and when you don't want to run this function one simple use case for this is maybe like fetching course info course info information right so you only want to fetch the course information when the URL changes, right? So that makes sense. When the URL changes, you need to fetch the new information. You obviously don't need to fetch the new information when somebody clicks on a UI element which toggles a list because that's whole another ball game, right? I don't want to send an HTTP request just because somebody toggled a list. It doesn't, it does not even connect. So what I'm going to do is as the second argument of use effect i'm going to pass in some sort of dependencies dependencies on this on which this function depends so right now if i have no dependency whatsoever what it would do is that it would run this function right here every time react re-renders this component that means if there's any change in prop or state or any variable inside prop or state React would re-render this and it would run this function every single time. If I pass in an empty array, that is an empty array like this, what it means is that I have no dependency to watch over, right? So that means that this won't run any time except for the first mount. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. So now I'm going to console log h1 ref right here and that's it so if we reload the app you're gonna see we get the current h1 right and let me just let me just pull in a state variable real quick here so that i can actually show you the power of use effect so what i'm gonna do is use state state of zero right and i'm just gonna say bring me use effect and i'm just gonna say that this is a counter and I'm going to say when I click on this, I want the set counter to have the old value plus one, right? Hit save. And if I go here, now what happens, keep an eye on console, right? So we have this object right here logged in and we have our home and stuff here. So if I click on this, you can see that our counter is incrementing but there's nothing in the console going on. So what do I mean by that? It's because I'm monitoring nothing that this console logs it for the first time when the component is mounted, right? And you see that we do not get the current value as undefined because if I console log it here, if I console log h1 ref here, we're gonna see that if I reload this, we get the fir first object, which is this console log, as current undefined 
but inside the console log of use effect which only runs once we get the correct correct h1 what that means is that this function right here when it runs from the first time this component is already mounted right so this this syntax right here is very close to component did mount right because component did mount and when it did mount I want to run this particular function how cool is that so if I hit save you're gonna see the direct difference between the simple console and the use effect so this is actually an equivalent of component did mount now what happens if I pass in counter here what happens then now if I hit save what we're gonna see is we have home 0 but when I click on this we get home 1 right and if I click on this again we get home 2 but it's logging the console log is logging it twice now the reason for that obviously is because we have this console log statement here as well which I'm gonna get rid of and hit save now there's a lot a lot of exciting stuff going on here and I'm pretty excited to discuss why that was the case you see that this console log the first console log ever was undefined but the subsequent console logs have the element correct element and it is interesting why that is the case so we'll discuss that in later videos but for now what we need to remember is that when I click on this we see that we get console logs again and again and again from this particular hook because now we are we are monitoring the counter variable very precisely so let's just go ahead and do a little bit more than this so I'm gonna you know just clean this up a little bit so that it's easier for us to see and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another counter I'm gonna say counter 2 or actually instead of this let's just create a div right and I'm gonna create an h1 with a counter an h1 with a counter with a counter 2 button set oops set counter to counter counter plus one right and counter one I'm gonna do the same thing with counter two but set counter two and this would be counter two and here I'm gonna make use of another counter set counter two set counter two right all right so once we do that what we're gonna see is now if I hit save and let's just pull in the h1 ref as well for our for the record and let's see what went wrong what went wrong where mm, okay so it saves me parsing error unexpected token expected a comma and sure enough we are missing a closing bracket right there so now what happens is if I click on counter one it increments you see that we get the current log dash div but this does not happen if I increment counter two right because I'm not I am not monitoring counter two changes so if it updates my effect does not care because it does not exist in the dependencies however if I just change this to counter 2 you're gonna see the effect reverses and if I press counter 2 it logs it but not for counter 1 and just like I said if I do not have anything here at all this would run for every single re-render of the component right so that means that if anything changes that effect would be called you can see it is called for both of them Similarly, if you include both the counter and counter two, it would be called for both of them. Right, so the console is a little behind, so you don't have to worry about that, right? So yeah, you can see how it works. So that's how use effect works, and that's all for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you then in the next one.